All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to sketch polar curves. Now, before that, I do want to tell you a little bit about polar coordinates. So we have learned that a uh, Cartesian coordinates plane, the xy plane. So we know a point in Cartesian plane can be written as x comma y. Now in polar coordinates, you define the point in terms of r and theta, where r is the distance from the origin and theta is the direction. So think about it this way. If this is my uh, uh, xy plane, let's uh, say this is our xy plane. And if I wanna plot a point, let's say p is right here, this is p, it is given in terms of x comma y. In polar coordinates, the same point can be represented in terms of radius. R is the radial distance from the origin to that point. So this would be the R. And this angle right here that tells you how far to open from the positive x-axis, which we're also going to call it the polar axis, this is theta. So the same point can be written as R comma theta. Now, something that you want to remember also that R could be negative because if R is negative, for instance, if you want to plot the point, let's say P, that's negative R theta, well, you still drew the same point P, the point R comma theta, but negative R just means you go in the opposite direction. So you reflect the point P about the origin and the point negative r theta will end up right here. So that will be the point for negative r theta. So the negative radius, it's weird to say, but it is um, doable in this case. Negative just indicates that you go in the opposite direction. Similarly for theta, if theta is negative, then instead of traveling counterclockwise, you will go this direction. So this will indicate negative theta. So all of that information should be a quick review before we get into a uh, polar curves. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to graph uh, r equals one minus cosine theta in Cartesian plane. So we're gonna make table of values so that it's easier to sketch. So we're gonna make a column for uh, theta and based on our choice for theta, we can find r because r is in terms of theta. So let's go ahead and start with zero. So if theta is zero, you have r is going to be one minus cosine of zero. Now, trigonometry should be very smooth topic in this section or else we're gonna run into a lot of trouble. So you should all know what cosine of zero is. We know that cosine of zero is one. So this is one minus one, zero. So when um, theta is zero, r, the radius is also zero. The next point I'm gonna pick is pi over two. So I'm really picking the one that are on the quadrant. For instance, if you draw your xy plane, you could plot more points. So we know, so this is our Cartesian plane. This is zero, this is pi over two. This is pi, this three pi over two, back to two pi. And then just keep going around. But I'm gonna plot in just the one on the quadrants because I think it'll be good enough for us to get the picture. But you could plug points in between such as pi over three, pi over six, pi over four, or two pi over three and so on. So let's go ahead and plot pi over two. So if I plot pi over two into cosine, so you get one minus cosine of pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. So this is one minus zero, that's one. Now the next point I'm plotting is uh, pi. So cosine of pi, this is one minus cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. This is one plus one, that would be two. So at pi, our graph will be a two. Uh, three pi over two, let's see what that gives us. So cosine of three pi over two, this is one minus cosine of three pi over two, plugging it into the original. So this will give you zero, one minus zero, that would be zero. Last point I'm gonna plot is two pi. So for two pi, cosine of two pi is one. So we have one minus one, that would be zero. All right, so it looks like I made a mistake somewhere. So I made a mistake here. Uh, 
cosine of three pi over two is zero, but one minus zero, that's gonna be one. All right, so that was a mistake. Sorry about that. All right, now let's go ahead and draw this. So so the, the highest uh, value for R we get is a two. So I'm gonna uh, draw the x-axis labeling one and then two and so on. So let, this is good enough to scale. So when theta is zero, R is one. So my distance is also, sorry, zero. So it's gonna be right here, that first point zero, zero. And then when my angle is pi over two, so I'm gonna curve it this way, pi over two, reach pi over two, my radius is one. So let's call this one. So I'm gonna go to that angle from zero. So that's the next point. And then when uh, angle, my angle is pi over two, sorry, pi, that's right here. When we reach that level, we're gonna be at two. So my radius is gonna increase from one to two. So right here. So we're gonna come like this. That's that point. And then from pi over pi to three pi over two, our radius gets smaller to one. So we're gonna go back here, negative one at three pi over two. And then from that angle to two pi, we're back to zero. So I'm gonna curve it back to zero at two pi. So there you have it. That's your picture. This is R equals one minus cosine theta. Now often we do give this picture a name because it looks like a heart. So we call this a cardioid, cardioid. So that's the name of this picture. Go ahead and graph this polar curve. So we're sketching R equals three plus six nine theta. Let's make table of values for a uh, some point. So we're gonna pick values for theta and based on theta, we'll get our R values. So let's go ahead and start with zero. So if, if uh, theta is zero, you will have R equals three plus six sine of zero. And sine of zero, we know that's zero, so this is simply three. All right, so that's R. And then the next angle we're gonna go to is pi over two. So if R, uh, we wanna find R if theta is pi over two. So let's plug in pi over two in here. So sine of pi over two, we know that's one. So this is going to be um, three plus six, which is nine. So when theta is pi over two, R is nine. The next value I'm gonna plot is a uh, pi. So if uh, theta is pi, you'll have three plus sine of pi. Sine of pi, we know that's zero. So this is also gonna be three. So at pi, we're going to be at three. Then the next point is three pi over two. So if I plug in three pi over two, sine of three pi over two, that's negative one, so this is three minus six, which is negative three. All right, let's do one more. So let's do two pi. So then this would be uh, R equals sine of two pi, six, three plus six sine of two pi. Sine of two pi is zero, so this is three. All right, so maybe we have enough points to come up with a sketch. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll try to come up with a sketch for this curve. So when theta is zero, so this is x and y plane. So we know this is zero, this is pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two, and then uh, the next one would be two pi. So these are the standards. You can plot more points, like I said earlier, to get better view, but I think we have enough. If we don't, we'll just plug in a few more in between. So when r is zero, when theta is zero, your radius is three. So we're gonna plot r is three. So let's suppose this is three. So there you go, that's your first point. And then for, so from here to here, that's pi over two. So as you're increasing theta, our radius is nine. So it's gonna increase to nine. So let's say this is nine, perhaps that's nine. So we're gonna to increase to nine, so like that. So that's for pi over two, we get nine. And then as we go down to pi, our radius, so as we go from here to here, the radius is three, so it's gonna go down to three. So 
let's label that to be three, but it's negative three, of course. So three means we follow the direction. So that's radius three. And then from pi to three pi over two, so that's this right here, our radius is negative. So remember earlier in this video, we said negative radius means you go in the opposite direction. So you plot the point for positive, but then you follow the opposite direction. But it looks like, so instead of curving it this way, so it looks like we're not going to stop right here at three because we are negative. This so we're going to be right here, but it, it's hard to determine how we're going to curve that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a point that's um, between pi and three pi over two. So the way I'm going to do it is actually, I'm going to try to see if there is any x-intercept for this uh, curve. So when is r equal to zero? What are the theta when r is zero? So let's go ahead and find that. So let's set r equals zero and we're going to find some theta value. So that will give us better direction on how to curve this. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, say zero is equal to three plus six sine theta. So I'm setting the equation equal to zero. So you have this. So then you get negative three is equal to six sine theta. And then you have um, negative three divided by six is equal to sine theta. In other words, sine theta is equal to, uh, R is gonna be zero when sine theta is negative one half. So we wanna know what theta value that gives us one half. So we know from our knowledge of trigonometry, sine is negative in two different places. So if you remember from uh, pre, uh, trigonometry, I guess, from ASTC, we know that sine is negative in this quadrant and this quadrant. So this is the angle we want. So that's going to be, uh, so pi over six is when sine value is one half. So negative one half will be on the third quadrant. So this angle would be pi over six plus pi. So one of the data, it's going to be seven pi over six, because that's when sine will give you negative one half. And the next one is going to be this one right here. So that angle is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6. So that's 11 pi over 6. So these are the two angles when we actually cross the x-axis when r is 0. So let's go ahead and find 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is somewhere here. So that is 7 pi over 6. So we're going to be at zero when, when theta is seven pi over six. So seven pi over six is between pi and three pi over two. So our radius is zero. So we're going to curve it zero like this. And then three pi over two, we're at negative three. So instead of going down at that, we're going to go opposite direction. So right here, like that. And then um, the next one we found when we also hit back zero is this one right here. 11 pi over 6. So this was 11 pi over 6. So that's between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, 11 pi over 6. Again, we go back to 0. So that means from this number 3, we're going to go back to 0 at that angle. And then the last one, when theta is 2 pi, we hit 3. That's the radius. So something like that. So that's the final picture of this. It looks a little creepy. So I'm going to uh, fix it a little, I'm trying to make it smooth. All right, so that's the picture. So as you can see, we have our intercepts labeled. Uh, we have intercepts right here. That's one of them. Then these guys, and then this one. Those are the x-intercepts. You can label them as a point.